Hey there, everybody. Welcome into the ESPN FC oh. studios for today's edition of Extra Time. Of course, I you, missed yesterday's edition of Extra Time, so why I had you do some that? extra energy today. Why did you do that? Just to get under your skin. Well, because 90, 99% of the people that are watching this right now right. were watching the show before. You think so? I actually would disagree with that. I think so a lot think of people just, turn just off. watch Extra Time. It's all over YouTube, just social media. You don't know how big of a viral sensation you are, do you? I'm perfectly healthy, thanks very much. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> All right, we got uh, Kieran and Jules with us as well. I don't have a flight to catch, so I'm in no rush. So I might prattle on just a, a little bit here, Craig. Is that okay with you? Uh, no. Unless uh, Mike, you got, Mike unless you Mike got I mean, I can just walk okay. off. The answer would be no. The righteous anger of Craig Burley is our first question. For the boys, do you think VAR should get involved in plays like Ivan Tony's free kick? He actually moved the foam in the ball twice when the ref wasn't looking. That provided his window to score a free kick. Is that a VAR worthy? Nope. Look, there's four, there's four officials yeah. on the field. Mm -hmm. So can we can we give them something to do? I was about one of the four of them can, can spot actually what the job is. Their job is to referee the game, including the fourth official and the two linesmen along with the referee. Well, how about they do something? Right. I believe VAR can get involved in that. Yeah, the question is, did, would you want to see them get involved in something like that? Well, I feel he's paying attention. All he has to, they're communicating all the time. He just say, listen, he's moved the ball uh, a couple of feet. Just get a move it back. It, it's not difficult. Shouldn't be. He obviously couldn't be bothered. <laughs> Jules, next question here for you from Manchester Drake. Thoughts on Omar Barada moving from City to United? Yeah, that's the big news. One of the big news of the night here in England is the, uh, the breaking news that it looks like United for their new CEO under Sir Jim Ratcliffe's uh, tenure at the club have gone to City, to the neighbours, to get Omar Berada, who is Paris born and bred, so that, can, that obviously makes him a, a really good man and a very clever guy too. But more seriously, who had a high-profile job at Barcelona first, where he was head of sponsorship to start with, and then he was poached by City when Ferran, um, when Ferran Soriano and Chiqui Pigarishan arrived at City for the, um, you know, for the, 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 that new era, if you want. And then he started again as a head of sponsorship and then became like chief operating officer, all of that. So he was really good. Then he, overs he kind of oversaw the, uh, the City Football Group. And, and, and I think United saw a lot of qualities in him, which I think is right, completely right. I think he was ready for a big job. I don't think there's right now a bigger job in, in football than this one, considering the work that he would have to do at United to bring that club back to the top. So I think we can wish him good luck, but from a United point of view, and again, we don't know exactly when he will start. It could well be not before the, the start of next season. But regardless, I think when this is confirmed, it will be a really big coup from a United point of view. So the question to Jules is, was this guy involved in any of the 115 problems that City have? Because mm. if he is... It's, it's a good not, question. It's not a great Steve. move for United, is it? I can see what you're saying, Jules. What do it's you think? It's a question that nobody... Yeah, no, it's a great question, of course, and I, I didn't touch upon it simply because I don't have the answer, Stevie, I can't tell you, but I think a lot of people are asking that question, mm. and it's the right question. I'm not sure to what degree he, he would have been involved in those charges or what City are accused to have done wrongly over the, over the years. So, yeah, it's a, it's a fair question, a good question. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer. Well, you don't know, Aaron Jules, I get that. I know, it's a first here on, uh, on Extra Time. <laughs> <laughs> Stu provides our next question. How does the team react to hearing someone's gotten hurt on international duty? So I guess obviously the, the latest example of this, Mo Salah. Kieran, what's the reaction when, when one of your teammates gets hurt on international duty? Oh, well, if it's someone like Mo Salah and you're playing for Liverpool, then um, it's not good. It's not good. It's, um, it spreads like wildfire uh, around the team. You know, everyone's kind of looking at each other to say, you know, who's going to step up. Um, but you know, I mean, listen, that's what that's what happens throughout the season. Always, you know, you, you have to deal with it. And there's um, there's players that you, you you look to lean on, and especially for for someone like Liverpool now, that you would have, you know, so many players. Joe Yota, he's there. He's come back and looks 
breath of fresh air again. Um, so yeah, you always look to to players that can can step up and hopefully fill that void. Very well. Norwegian racing fish. Ooh, you want to talk some Bundesliga. Does the win for Leverkusen today demonstrate resilience that bodes well for the title run, or does it expose cracks in the armor teams can exploit for the remainder of the season? Well, they have got some players away, like, like a lot of teams. And and they picked up another injury on the back line today, right? Jonathan Ta, Jonathan, Jonathan Ta, get it right. Yeah. Those people that enunciate the names are pain in the backside, aren't they? <laughs> be honest with you. Steady. Giant balls. <laughs> Commentators, most of them. Uh, he's been playing, he actually, he struggled early on today defensively, he got himself a goal, but he really had a poor first first half, first half an hour or first half. So defensively, they were, I mean, they were so vulnerable early on, but, but they are resilient and they didn't dominate the midfield in the first half, they did in the second half. Jack and Palacios in there. And they're a completely different side, and we talked about this on the show. So there is some resilience to them, but with Boniface out, Patrick Schick is going to have to step up big time. He's a good player. He's a good player, but uh, he has going to have to step up for them. And uh, you can't keep doing that if you're going to... I mean, maybe you can keep going all the way from now until May, leaving it as tight as that and as late as that, like they did this week and last week. But it's unlikely you're going to be able to do that most weeks. So it's been a good couple of weeks for them in terms of, uh, you know, getting the six points out of the two games right at the death. But they haven't played as well, certainly not in this game as we know they can. Although Leipzig were, I think, third in the league going yep. into this. So it was, a, it was a big game and it was away from home. Plus, a lot of the guys that are out are like AFCON, right? So they, yeah. should, they should get in a couple of weeks maybe most of those guys back. Next question for you, Jules. Where do you rank Antoine Griezmann in the list of all-time great French forwards, such as Henri, Trezeguet, etc.? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, I think uh, I think he's top ten, not top five, because I think between Platini and Copa, Zidane, Mbappé already, of course, and Thierry, then that's it. I think he's still top five, and it's a pretty amazing top five. I, I would probably put him very close to, just outside of that top five. But I think what he's done at Atletico Madrid is remarkable, wonderful, really. The, the, the mentality that he has, everything that he can do on the pitch, outside even of scoring goals and, and providing goals, it's just, it's just amazing. So, an amazing career. He still has, I think, a few more years ahead of him in Spain with Atletico before moving to MLS where he dreams to play one day and, and live in the US. So he will come towards your side at some point. Mm -hmm. but, but for now, I think we still need to enjoy like the goal we saw obviously on ESPN Plus the other night in the Copa del Rey in the derby against, against Real Madrid. This is just what he's capable of. And again, the intelligence, the football IQ, all of that, the energy, everything. He's just such a wonderful guy and a wonderful player. But when it comes, for, when it comes to playing for your country, you you can't not think about Olivier Giroud. You're right, he should have been one not, of the guys. You know, and I'm not saying like he has the talent level of, of all these other guys, particularly Platini and Zidane and Mbappe, but... you got to put him in the conversation. Just because of the goals that this guy scored for his country. You can't, you can't deny that. And he's still, he's still batting away now in Milan in his mid-30s. Yeah. Well, past mid-30s, right? 37. You with that, Jules? Yeah, 100%. He would also be in my top 10. Uh, Craig is right. He still holds right now. I mean, obviously, he knows that at some point Mbappé for sure is going to overtake him in the, as a top goal scorer in, in French football history. Maybe Griezmann as well, who's not too, too far. But Mbappé certainly. Um, so he won't hold it for much longer. But right now, he's still, he's still he's, he holds the record. The record is his, which is incredible. And there's the World Cup, of course, and there's everything else that he's done. Over, I think he, he made his debut in 2011 for the national team. So it's a long, long international career that, and the boys know how difficult it is to play international football. So yeah, he deserves a lot of love and credit. Jules has been breaking some news this week. Okay. Um, specifically about Gio Reyna and who's interested in him. Somebody that's going to play him. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice for US fans. We'd like to see him play a little bit more than, what, the 15 minutes that he got today. Garbage minutes, it should be said, when it was already 3-0. Uh, Jules, anything additional on Gio Reyna that you're hearing over there? I think the discussions continue 
uh, Sebi. I said it to Gab the other day as well. I don't know what the boys and what you, and you Sebi, as well think. There's, we said, nine days left in the transfer window. How is this? How is this not sorted out already? Mm. I mean, we've known since September, maybe October, that he was not going to play much for Dortmund. So his dad and now George Mendes, his agent, who, to be fair to George Mendes, has just been chosen very recently. But they have plenty of time to prepare for this transfer window. How could we enter the last week of the transfer window very soon? And he's still at Dortmund, he's still a Dortmund player, hardly playing for that team. I just don't understand it because there are clubs there who are interested. He's a young player, very talented, everybody knows that. And yet, and yet, it's still not done. This should have been done on January the 1st or very early in the month, like other transfers have been done, because they've known for a very long time that he would not be playing much for Borussia Dortmund. Mm. Especially when they brought back Jadon Sancho. Even less playing time to go around. Sebi, story time. Mm. How did you not end up hosting yesterday's show? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, go on, Borussia. Come on, here we go. Well, you, obviously, you yeah, guys know this. There's, there's lots of snow in the Northeast in the United no, States. No, there's not. What are you Can talking you about? Question? Did you not notice that it was going to snow? Failed I'm a sports host, not a weather host. Failed to prepare. All you got to do is pick your phone up and go like that. Like, how is that? Tell you. I'm sorry. It tells tell me you. more about your tech. Tell, even I can yeah. do it. You can go like even that. Even I can get on it. Yeah. No, I did botch it. I did. I really had. I didn't know that the weather was coming as, as it was. And the worst part was that I kept telling Dan, I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Because uh, it looked like we were going to board the plane, and then we didn't board the plane, and then they ran out of de-icing fluid. So it wasn't just me that was unprepared. I'd like to shout out the folks at no, no, National uh, Airport uh, in Washington. No, 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 it's they on you. Unprepared too. It's on you. Don't blame other people. And then at some point, I just thought, you know what? So de-icing. That's going what you're going in. with. You're going with de-icing fluid. Is that what you're going with? Yeah, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> that is my story. So it's mid-January, yeah. and <laughs> I got the boss here calling me because I'm not here, and I got my wife at home calling me because I'm not there, and I'm sitting on a tarmac just. Taking it on both sides. I mean, it's well, like, sort yourself out, man. <laughs> it's mid-January. Yeah. How long have you lived in DC? My whole life. I right, was born right. there. <laughs> mid-January in the, the, the <laughs> northeast no, no. of the United States, right. and the bad weather catches you out. I know. I should have flown up the night before. I know. I mean, Lesson learned. And so, pilots I can't make that mistake again. Pilots don't have to be able to see you out the windscreen to fly a plane. It's oh, all really? done electronically anyway. Yeah. Well, that was what an, did that they was need a, to see out the window for? That was another issue yesterday. Uh, they didn't have a pilot for a little. <laughs> Please tell me that's not a serious point. <laughs> Pilots don't have to see out the window. <laughs> All right. All right, well, yes. Yeah, so well, somebody had, for that. Somebody had to time. work anyway, didn't he? Somebody had to work. Hey, you know. Huh? And doesn't work enough. I think we got to get him some more days here in the studio. That'll do it for us. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. It won't be me. Hopefully, I do catch a flight and it gets home on time. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you'll make sure you get that one. <laughs>